Hey everybody, Ragnarok here, and I'm climbing through the ranks of Lie Chess. Uh, I just beat a 2074, and I wanted to share the game because it goes along with the previous video I just put out uh, on the Yugoslav attack against the dragon. So I wanted to go through the game here. I am playing as black, and this player is playing as white. And he goes with e4, I go with c5, uh, the Sicilian. And then he goes with knight f6, standard opening, and I go with d6, standard. Uh, then he pushes to create an open Sicilian with d4. I almost always take uh, pretty much no reason why I shouldn't. Um, the whole goal of opening up this c file is really, really, uh, I can't really turn it down. Um, and then he takes back. Uh, I have seen some people take with uh, queen, and that's uh, for another uh, video. But just real quickly, um, probably the best move is here because white is planning to come here. And you're kind of uh, out of options to move, so you kind of have to think of who you want to block with. Uh, but that's for another video. So in uh, this variation, he goes with knight takes on d4, and I immediately go into the accelerated dragon with uh, g7 or 6. He goes with knight to c3, and then I bring my bishop to uh, g7, uh, fi finalizing the dragon formation of having the uh, these three pawns, fianchetto with your bishop on the king side. Now, he comes with bishop to e3, uh, which signifies that we're going to start the Yugoslav attack here and then I bring my knight to f6. And if you remember in my previous video, I talked about the order of the moves, and that's why it's really, really important. Now this was a 10 minute game for each of us, uh, no no delay, so just straight 10 minutes. And um, perhaps he moved a little bit too quick, but his next move was queen to uh, d2. Now normally, uh, the best move is probably gonna be uh, to go to f3. That's almost always gonna be the best move because my knight really wants to go to this square because if I can prevent the uh, h6 diagonal with the bishop and the queen um, and have my knight move this bishop around, that's really the goal. That's what I want to accomplish. Um, and that's why f3 should be played first. Now in this situation, he played queen goes to d2 first because he was eyeing this square and perhaps he moved a little bit too quick. And you don't want to move too quick if you're playing as black. You may want to castle in this situation, but take advantage. Knight goes to g4. Uh, that's really the square it wants to be on, and that's why you moved it here in the first place. Because if you think about it, when the knight moved back here, uh, yes, it's attacking this. It's mostly really creating some discovery attacks with this bishop, but this knight's not going to attack the d4, d5 square. Um, it does actually help push this pawn if uh, black, white plays incorrectly, but I want to bring it here because now you can't come here because it's double prevented with the knight and the bishop. Um, so the bishop really only has one good square, which is to go to g5. Um, now normally there'd be a knight here, and you would have a pin on my queen, but even if that knight were there, it's not pinned in the dragon Sicilian, uh, because this pawn is always going to be on e7, and I generally don't want to push this pawn, because if I do, uh, it creates weakness, weaknesses after the queen and rook are on this file, um, and there's really not that much that can prevent, uh, protect this backwards pawn. So it probably wouldn't go... Uh, probably wouldn't move anyway. It does create a weakness later, which you may see in this game, uh, where the knight comes and attacks it too. But you know, we'll see if we get there. Uh, so I just castle. Um, he probably could have played here, as the engine is pointing out. Um, if he did, I actually thought he was going to do that. My plan was to just come here, which is really kind of one of the squares that uh, you want to have one of your knights on. Uh, there we go. Uh, in the center. So I didn't see that as a big deal. I think the engine recommends I would go back here in that situation, but uh, my main plan when I played was to go to uh, e5 with my knight. Maybe a little preemptive, maybe uh, maybe not, but um, he ended up going with uh, castling in this situation. Now, as soon as he castled, I saw an opportunity where this bishop needs to move. Um, once it moves off this diagonal, because there's really no good squares, if I did, let's say, attack it and he came here, I do have this pawn push, which attacks both the knight and the bishop. Um, so potentially could have been there with that. He may have some counters or so. But the main thing I saw was that this queen and uh, king are on the same diagonal as my bishop. Now my bishop is already protecting the square with the knight. So if I can move this bishop, I have a nice diagonal here uh, pinning the queen, potentially. So the problem I don't like, which the engine recommends h6, is that if he moved back here, um, I can't bring my bishop there afterwards. So the move I did, perhaps the wrong move, um, I did go with f uh, f6, because f6 pushes him out of the way. Now, yes, this bishop can come here, as the engine is pointing out, but it's just check. My king can go here anyway. There's no real threat there right away. If 
the real threat is once this bishop moves off the file, um, my bishop can come here and potentially uh, have a nice pin here. He does have the pawn to block, which we'll get into in a second, but he ends up going with the bishop first. He doesn't check me. And then I bring my bishop right in. Now it's not an immediate um, loss. You'll notice that these knights are not able to block this square, uh, this square, this square. They can't be blocked. Like if the bishop came back, I would just take it. Um, so he can't, he's kind of out of play. He's kind of pushed out of play at that instance. So his best move really is just to push on uh, e, uh, f4 because that blocks everything and uh, you know it kind of looks hopeless. Like maybe if I push this pawn here, he could potentially back it up there. Uh, but he can't do that because I can push this and block in this bishop. So we'll see. My next move is to push on e5 because I want to have extra an extra attacker on here. Like I said, if he goes here, I would just push this pawn and I end up getting a piece anyway. So that's why that's so strong there. And at the same time, with tempo, I'm pushing this knight away too. So the knight, actually check first. Uh, I believe my king moves over to h8. Yep. And then now the knight moves backwards. So um, if he had moved back first, he would have been blocking that bishop from coming here with the check on the king. So it's important that he did that first. So now he goes backwards and I just take because he can't really take back because of the same threat here. Now, even if he were to move, um, I could take, he takes back and then uh, I have this and this bishop is still protected and it's actually a pin and he's gonna lose the queen as well. So you can't quite do it that way. So if we go back, um, I take the pawn, he does end up taking, and we just explain why he can't. I push the pawn here. So I do have this fork here, um, and it's too late. Like he can't push this at this time, uh, I believe, because I think, yeah, I think that's what he actually does. Yeah, he does do that. So he, he can't do that because I'm still attacking these two pieces, but the next move, see if you guys see it. For me, it was to come to knight to e5. And now this is a unique situation I don't think I've ever had against a 2000 player where I'm attacking three pieces. Um, really, really cool. Uh, he kind of has to move any one of these pieces. He does kind of have a tactic potentially down here, which he goes with next, which is to bring the knight. Now, take a minute to think about this tactic and what you think the best situation would be. I'm still attacking two pieces, but he's attacking two of mine, attacking my rook and my queen. And no longer is this situation here because if I take, my knight is no longer here protecting my bishop. So he could just take back. So that's not really strong for me because now he's all of a sudden per, per, um, per, uh, provoking checkmate or threatening checkmate here. Um, so something has to be done. I'd have to block that. And I'm just not in a great position here. Um, the pieces are even. He's actually got a strong bishop. This knight could now come in on this strong square on uh, d5. So that's not the best situation for me. In here, after he takes, I decide to take the bishop. So taking the bishop now, he can take my queen, but I take back. And then once his, let's say he does take, and I take here, um, his knight is out of squares to go to. So he can't really go anywhere. Um, if he takes here, I can take back. But if he, you know, there's really nothing else he can do. Uh, he would have to take there. Um, but if you notice, if I go back in here, uh, well, actually, he could also move this piece out of the way, but then I get a piece, and now it would be up after he takes just a full bishop, which is really strong. I mean, I've got this nice diagonal. Um, in this situation, uh, pawns are actually even, so I'm up a full piece, three points there. Uh, so that would have been really strong for me. So what he does instead here, if we go back, I take here. He instead moves his queen, um, which I thought was a you know decent move. Um, he's already down a piece, so I kind of have this knight hanging right now. My queen and rook are still under attack, but so is his bishop. So first we take the bishop with tempo on the king um, and I'm up a bishop and actually I've got both of his bishop and I've got all four of my minor pieces. And this is against the 2000 players. So uh, just to reiterate with that opening, uh, make sure that you don't move too quick, too quick out of order because you wanna know your order of your moves and kind of why you're doing it. Um, a lot of times people will just kind of move because they know that it's the sequence, but they know the idea of getting to the sequence, like those queens uh, both here, or sorry, queen and bishop on here with that file. That's very important to get to, but you have to push F3 first. So just a side note there. Um, after I take, he has to move. And then I decide I'm up two pieces, so why not just trade this knight? This knight could become a little bit difficult, um, and then he takes here. Now the engine is pointing out this is the best move. I actually missed this in here because I forgot the bishop was protecting it. But that would have been really good because he kind of has to go over here. He's kind of stuck in the corner. There's no easy way to 
block this uh, little duo here. Maybe he goes like back here with his knight, but that's really bad anyway. Meanwhile, I'll get time to develop. Um, but in the in the game itself, I actually went to uh, knight go went to um, e5, which is a mistake. Uh, it's not the best move, but um, at, at least I'm up two pieces, so that's pretty pretty good chances right there. Of course, he does come in with the pawn. Um, my next move, I try to trade queens uh, because he can't take here because it's protected by the rook. So I just want to trade queens and make this situation much easier. I've got my pieces a little bit scattered. This rook still can't come out. Um, so I want, want to do what I can to get there. So his queen comes here. I end up protecting this pawn. He brings both rooks on the same file, which is pretty strong. So I have to protect this squared out here. So I bring my knight out, opening my rook, protecting my other knight. Um, but this allows his knight to come in. And now he's got three attackers, the queen, uh, sorry, queen, knight, and rook all attacking here while I've only got two defenders. Um, so I figure it'd probably be best to defend that and also try to trade queens again. But he doesn't want to because as a general rule, when you're down, you don't want to trade. So that's that's rightfully done by him. Again, I'm trying to trade pieces. If he moves here, um, I've got some potential ideas here. I probably would push this first to move him away and then maybe take this piece. Uh, this rook is kind of weak here. Um, so he decides instead to, if we go back a move, he takes my rook, I take his. Um, and you can see like the pieces are slowly dwindling. Uh, he has a queen, rook, and knight. I've got three minor pieces, queen and, uh, and rook. So it's pretty strong. He ends up going for this attack over here. I decided to just defend. I was getting a little bit low on time at this point. He brings the queen in again here, pretty, uh, pretty strong square for it. And I decide I'm going to bring the knight up because I ultimately want to take this pawn in the middle. And then with a threat on uh, check and potentially a back rack, back rank checkmate if I can bring my other rook on the same file. So he ends up bringing, going here to uh, attack my rook. It's actually uh, not quite checkmate once he takes, but I would have to come back and trade and I'd, I'd actually be uh, an even game actually if I did that, but not the best even game to be in. Um, so I attack his queen. Queen has to move. It's being defended by the rook. And he comes over to d6. Um, Still with three uh, attackers, I've now removed one of my defenders so I can create some other um, attack ideas. But I try, try to start to achieve my goal of attacking the, uh, the c2 pawn. He comes in with the knight, which is pretty scary here. Uh, because if my rook decides to move somewhere off the file, um, he's got some ideas here. Some really strong ideas. I think that's going to be actually a checkmate. Yeah, uh, not quite checkmate. Really strong though. Maybe it's checkmate. Not quite. But it's not good. It's not good for me. This can potentially move and attack. Um, you don't want to be on the run when you're on the offense. So let me go back to queen takes c2. Oh, I missed a move. Uh, yep. So yeah, the knight came in here. And then I take the c2 pawn with tempo. He moves to the corner. And then I kind of want to either uh, provoke one of these pawns to weaken um, by going to rook on c8. Because now I've got a potential mate. Let's say he did something else. I can go here. Rook takes, and rook takes for a checkmate. So uh, he has to prevent that, and he does so with uh, by pushing the uh, a3 pawn. Um, and this actually creates a weakness here, which is what I took advantage of. Check, and actually missed the checkmate here. It's talking about this move here, which is forced checkmate in a few moves. Um, let me see if I remember it. He kind of has to prevent this here. And there's no easy way to do it. I mean. The knights are both blocking the pawn uh, squares. There's no check because he's blocking himself in here. That's why I didn't take the knight back. Um, I don't think he could prevent checkmate here. Uh, we would do check there. And uh, I forget off the top of my head. What is it? Well, I ended up going here, which is a mistake. I mean, he could have taken, but then I would have um, gone after checkmate here uh, as well um, and he would have given up more material too so um, he actually ends up going here again and I bring my knight in again attacking check or attacking uh, uh, checkmate and he can't bring his rook like he could last time I'm also preventing the squares this is really the only good square that he can go to um, but then of course I have a nice little tactic bring my knight to b3 uh, check attacking the king and the queen and he I believe resigned I guess he went one more move. He let me take the queen. Um, so yeah, that was me beating a 2074 
uh, with uh, the Accelerated Dragon against the Yugoslav attack. So always make sure to do your moves in order. Uh, let me know what you guys think of this video if you'd like to see any other specific openings. I just encountered this a lot and I figured it would make sense to go over the same openings for a few videos in a row. Uh, so that way you guys can learn a little bit different analysis and see the different moves because there's a lot of different things that can occur. So hopefully you all enjoyed this. Uh, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already um, and I will see you in the next video.